with the mission to keep as many men on as many guns for as long as possible. We called him Doc. Welcome to Combat Vet Vision. And now your host, Aaron Chief Siebert. Hey, how's everybody doing? Hey, this is Aaron Siebert, retired Navy Chief. Lucky to be alive after being hit with a mortar round April 2006. Took over 100 pieces of shrapnel, had my last rights read to me. I'm lucky to be alive. I spent a lot of my time on this show really kind of covering a lot of different issues related to combat vets, our sponsors, supporters, volunteers, a lot of different things that are that are involved in that. Um, <clears throat> Sitch Radio puts this on. Ryan Colburn talked me into going on the show some time ago. But really, it's a great example, a great place for, for, for our stories to kind of be told in a way. And I, and I will say that a lot of times it's filtered because I, I say this a lot of times. There is no place for combat in society after we get back. So I think we even put our own filters on our story because sometimes the story is just so raw, so crazy. It's not really a place or there's not a place to tell it. And and even here, it's very difficult to kind of fully tell the story uh, unless it's under the under the heading creating chaos. And I do I do have a, a, a set of, of, of uh, shows that go into that a little bit more in depth. But hey, I'm <clears throat> I'm really honored to uh, have my guest today. And we, we worked on this project called Mission Alliance, and you're going to hear uh, a, a little bit about it. Um, but uh, I got Beth Pratt, Dr. Beth Pratt uh, on, and uh, she was part of this project with me. And she was very um, instrumental in making sure uh, that this project got put together. Uh, she's a doctor uh, of nursing. Let me pull her stuff up real quick. Hold on. Give me one second. Um, she is a PhD RN, assistant professor, uh, Christine E. Lyon College of Nursing, associate investigator for, for CPA, canines providing assistance to wounded warriors. Health Research Initiative for, for Veterans, Florida Atlanta, Atlantic University, Davy Campus. Uh, and that is where you'll be able to find her in, in Fort Lauderdale area. Um, so, Beth, thanks a lot for, for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> thanks. So we just, we just got done doing this project, but I'm going to read this disclaimer before we get going just so... Uh, that it's that it's it's put out there and and this needs to be verbatim the research reported in this presentation was funded through a patient centered outcomes research institute award the views statements and opinions in this presentation are slowly the, are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the views <clears throat> of the patient centered outcomes research institute its board of governors or meth or methodology committee. Thank so, you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to get that out before we get going, Perfect. but Hey, we have, we have this great discussion, great, great presentation that we're going to do on the 10th of March. And, you know, if you see the flyer that's in this, in this, in this flyer has all the information about it. You can link on, you can get on the zoom meeting with us. And actually, here's go over some of these things. But we just got done doing this year-long study that uh, that went into this whole thing. But Beth, before we get into that, talk a little bit about you. What what brought you into to nursing? What got you into wanting to start getting into some research? I mean, you, you've had to, you've had to really go through a lot of stages in your life to get to a point where you want you're you're, you're in a, a place where you can do research. So right. talk a little bit about you for a while. Okay. Well. Let's see. I, I wanted to be in healthcare since I was younger because I love to help people. And I was a floor nurse and a community health nurse for quite some time. And I love community health. I think it's the most important part of nursing because you get to know how people live, what's important to them and, and all different aspects of their life. And I think that's super important instead of seeing just a little bit in the hospital. Uh, so I went into research and that's why i have a phd in nursing uh, as far as my research focus my dad was a veteran 
and I was the wife of a veteran um, in the Army, um, 82nd Airborne, and he went to Iraq. So I was that spouse on the home front. And he and I is providing assistance to wounded warriors. That part of it is important to me as well because me, my dog got me through a lot of that time. I mean, it's totally different for us on the opposite side, right? And when he came home, he had some signs and symptoms of PTSD. So it's important to me that people are heard and that we do what is most important for them to to better themselves or have better health, have better wellness. Awesome. I mean, that is that is exactly why I do it too. I mean, I I got into it. There's not very there's not a big voice for it. Uh, for PTSD. I mean, it, there's a lot of people trying to find out ways to deal with it or to work with it or to do something about it. But uh, everybody thinks they have a way and it, it, they do. They have some incredible ways, you know, whether it's whatever you're doing in life that's helping you move forward in a positive direction. That's that's a super important part. But I think when we got into some of the, the things that we were doing for Mission Alliance, it was really directed towards the COVID piece and how we started to deal with things during during COVID. And why was that such a change for us as veterans? You know, for, for me, it was kind of like now this now society gets to kind of know what it's like to, to, to isolate because they have to or because mm -hmm. out of fear. You know, the same thing that probably keeps us veterans from really going out and, and engaging in life sometimes is because we don't want to get involved. We don't want to get too much involved with society or something like that. And so we talked about, and I really kind of, kind of put an emphasis on um, the good and the bad of it because there, there was some really important things and we went through questions and it focused on, on four portions, right? Fo focused on loneliness, well-being. Uh, what are the social other isolation. <laughs> social, social isolation, social isolation and mental health, mental health. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, those were really great. And we get, we got, we even got to make the questions for, for this subject. Right. Right. Yes. And that was a, an important part of it. Like you said, with COVID-19, it brought a lot of maybe symptoms out and people may not have dealt with them in the best ways. And that was for some people. And like you said, there was some good to come out of it too, as well. And we wanted to know both sides. So we had our four regions, right. in the United States and different areas. And you had virtual meetings to cover the topics. And we had veterans come and some stakeholders like healthcare providers, family, friends, and they got to discuss uh, their ideas and their feelings about those four topics, right? So we started with social isolation, went to loneliness, and then mental health and well-being. So sort of the, the I'm not going to say bad, but the, the harder areas and then to a whole area like mental health and well-being. Right. And there was, you know, when, when you do these studies and, and doing these studies, I, I, what I really liked about it was that it, it allowed for, you know, I, I do my warrior groups all the time. I do them on Tuesdays for our combat vets. These became another avenue of a warrior group in a sense, because you're really kind of exploring some, some deep rooted thoughts and processes in people's lives to be intrusive, but now a doctor is allowed to come into that environment and actually see it because you guys were, were, were taking notes and being involved in all the legal side of things and the more, <laughs> <laughs> the more clinical side, you know, we as right. veterans, we get to be, you know, as peer to peer mentors or peer guys, we, we talk a different language. We, we get involved with them in a different way. Uh, but, uh, but it was really cool to have, you know, I, I had Basilia, in in mine and, and she was she was my doctor for this and uh it was great to to have her be involved in this it was it was cool to bring a civilian kind of look inside of it that obviously you guys do research anyway all the time but for this piece was kind of kind of different and, and and unique for us as veterans so it was cool tell me about your experience with this and how you felt well i First of all, we had I had a phenomenal team. Without you guys, I would not have been able to even move forward in that project. And each of the regional groups, like you said, had a veteran who was a leader because we talked about connection, right? So the veteran-veteran connection helps build trust. 
and you were the one who was leading the conversation, which for patient-centered outcomes research, that's the, the focus. And then we had the researchers who we, most of us were nurses, but Vianne was, a, she's a psychologist. And we were the people making sure we had all the information down so we could take that information later and create our research questions like we did. Because we wanna be able to take those one or two questions and move forward. Right. Yeah. And these, I mean, this is the second research project that I've been involved in. And, and the first one, you know, Cheryl had put this together a, l- a long time ago under CPA. And it was how we as veterans want to receive our medical information. And now this one right. being on COVID-19 and the PTSD that's involved in that. I think it's great that these kind of things are starting to be developed. And obviously this set of questions, this set of, this set of um, information is you know, when you talk about research, a lot of people are like, hey, was there blood involved? Was there, you know, what kind of research were you doing? No, this is an informational research, uh, data collection kind of thing. Um, and, and it was, it, it's a lot different than what you would think when you think about research in, in the movie sense of, of things sometimes. Right. Uh, so it was very cool. And it, talk talk a, bit, a little bit about that and, and maybe uh, some of the things that uh, you find interesting in it. Right, so the purpose of this project really was engagement. So it was to engage people in the process itself, but also to engage veterans and stakeholders who weren't necessarily part of the team, right? And the point is to find out what type of treatments or interventions are most important to veterans because like a researcher or a clinician may decide that something's important, but maybe it's not like uh, medication, for example, some people would rather have non-traditional um, alternative medications or, you know, um, therapies. So we need to talk to veterans first and people who who are around veterans, either work with them or live with them to be able to find out what is that item that you need to create the best wellness for, for you. And it's interesting because it's varied, obviously, everybody's individual. So some treatments might work for some, some might work for others, but with research, it's important to look at items like, like I said, complementary therapies that may not have as much research backing it. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a great point because so many veterans that I, 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 I deal with, I work with, you know, some of them are very... Um, very pinpointed uh hey this is what works for me and i don't and they may not want to see if there's anything else that works for them they might not be open enough to take that on and i think that sometimes we as veterans we we get caught up in that too like if we only have one hobby if that hobby falls apart do we have something else to grasp onto Mm -hmm. and it's almost like hey these therapy sessions these therapy things they were designed to kind of open the mind up a little bit to say, hey, what are the other options? What are what are some of the other things that I can grab a hold of? Maybe I should take a look at my life in this fashion because, you know, these veterans came in and they kind of maybe had some ideas set up for at first. And then they were able to kind of maybe focus some ideas a little bit broader or just broaden their minds on some of these things. And I think it's super important that that, that we came in with this whole project that was just such an amazing thing for me. Um, to be part of really. Right. And like you said, it, it, that community that you built during that one hour that you had to speak to people was so important because if you don't trust somebody, you're not going to say anything, right. You're not going to talk about what's important to you, but you know, you guys created that, which looks like I said, is phenomenal. So we could hear, and maybe people in the group, like you were saying, didn't think that they're, Ideas are important to research, but hopefully they have a better idea of, yes, you're needed in research <laughs> projects. And so we can focus on you. Right. Right. And when we came together to kind of put this whole thing together, um, mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate that I have a, a group that I run every Tuesday. I, I, I stay in contact with so many vets on a peer to peer on a, on a buddy buddy to buddy program, you know, I, I have a very well collected set of combat vets that I utilize for a lot of different things to be part of, 
so many different cool events. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody else that I, that when we, when we came together, I found out that there was a lot of problems and I'm starting to understand that and see it even with nonprofit organizations, you know, they might have a lot of, they might have a little bit of hard time getting enough members to participate in some of the events that are going on, even the fun ones, even ski trips to, you know, all these really cool things that are going on for veterans by nonprofit organizations. But uh, on top of that, on businesses, studies, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think a study almost should be conducted on that. <laughs> right. You know, it, it, talk, talk a little bit of, about that. Cause I didn't, I didn't have that same experience, but I know when I came together and listening to everybody, they still had some hard times pulling the eight people together. Even I did too. Not all the time did I have eight people right. for the, for the group. Sometimes it was seven, maybe six, but I was pretty close to eight. But but talk talk a little bit about your your thoughts on that. Right. I think um, part of it. I don't know if it's because of the COVID nineteen pandemic and oh, there's my cat. Um, and people were so tired of Zoom. I'm not sure if that was part of it, but. Um, the other veterans weren't really involved with nonprofits, but some were involved with universities. So they were able to tap into some of that university uh, veteran students. It was difficult though, because you've got a certain time of day you have to do it. Not everybody can get there or people forget. Uh, so it's really, how do you capture eight people? How do you make them interested enough to want to attend? Uh, it was difficult. and. One of the veterans thought he would be fine. He would be able to get eight people, no problem. But it didn't happen to be that way. And I don't know whether it's, you know, sometimes if you're going to a rural area, you might not have the internet access. That could have been an issue too, or it could have been disrupted. Um, and it's just getting the word out there. Where exactly should we focus to get the word out there? Is it social media? Where else? your organization, PTSD, uh, the organization, I don't know. So people did have a harder time than you guys. You guys mostly had, right, like what you said, eight people in the group, which was awesome. But <laughs> yeah, even I, with I, like I less people, I'm sorry, even with less people, they made it work. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. We definitely did. And, um, you know, I will say, you know, it, it is sometimes hard because, like I said, not only is people, not, not only are, are there are veterans kind of pinpointed on, on, hey, this is my thing, this is this, but time is also very valuable and, and trying to find, like you said, that, that time, even though we have this cool technology that allows us to be on a computer instead of having to go, go to some facility, it, uh, I think people's lives are super busy now. I think, uh, you know, especially with the economy, with all kinds of other issues, you know, it's just some, a lot of outside entities that that kind of, kind of do that. But I, I think the other thing is, you know, it's that trust. I think veterans are having a hard time trusting, um, a lot of things now, uh, because I think sometimes it's an exploitation in some, in, in some aspects, not all the time. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I, I, in my world, I see it sometimes I see right. organizations that try to act like they're doing something, but they're not really as, as great as they appear or, you know, and I, um, there's some organizations that have really kind of washed their names through the ringer <laughs> and maybe, maybe steered that off. So, you know, it's, it's a great, it's a great thing that, you know, this, this mission Alliance has been a really awesome program, uh, stand up. Everything has been just, just down, downright awesome. So I, I really like the fact that, you know, the veterans have that trust and hopefully we do them right. When we put together this book and this manual and these magazines right, so. and these cool things that we're putting. <laughs> right. I hope. Right. But that, that's cool. talk a little bit about uh, how it was for us to come together and kind of, kind of go over this stuff and kind of um, it was good to see each other. Cause we never, we never really, get, you, you got to deal right. with the team all the time because you were at the top <laughs> work on the team but the team finally came together at the end here uh, in, right. in January, and we were able yeah. to kind of capitalize on it. Right. It, so we all, each of the groups had eight meetings, right? And at the very end, like you said, in January, they came down to Boca Raton, Florida. Not quite as warm as we thought, but in person is, is different than virtual because it's, I don't know, there's just a different element. 
and to meet people who you've who you've worked with and sort of gotten to know in a more intimate setting was very important and it came I think it came easy to all of us you know it might have been a little awkward at first but I think that we all became very um we could could converse about everything we discovered and work together to create questions that was a part of the reason I sort of wrote people up into groups and tried to get everybody to work with somebody new right so we could all get an idea of everybody else and who they are as a person yeah not only that but we got to see and hear like hey this is where you, you work your college you know and great team from right. from david you know and, and there's some other really cool things that you are involved in that you you know get to see you know in the veteran world that i i wasn't familiar with on this side of the the, the planet or the side of the united <laughs> states you know to, to be able to right. to go check out team team uh great team Right. And experience their little, you know, their little clubhouse with some really cool options for our veterans and some, some goal oriented, you know, fitness programs to lifestyle changes uh, that right. benefits not only just PTSD, but full on lives, you know, uh, injuries right. to major technology that's being utilized that you may or may not know about. You know, I felt like, I felt like I was, I went from... <laughs> the planet earth as i know it to a full-on star trek uh right. like is this real you know holodeck slash i don't know get in the machine you know hopefully you know right. let it run its course and your healing process is going to speed up by 15 percent. so right. some weird cool thing like that right right so there was yeah there was that i i wouldn't i wouldn't have been able to experience that had this program not been you know on and there's right. other things that that it drove me into experiencing as well. Everybody's personality, get to know each other a little bit, uh, hanging out a little bit, and uh, right. just talking about some really cool things. Yes, and the great team is interesting. So David Kirkland, he's our veteran consultant, and like you said, the great team has complementary therapies. Um, I'm not sure which one, if you participated in one of them, but photobiomodulation, so light emission and healing of the body is is one of the things that they do there, along with Tai Chi and like you said, physical exercise. So the whole body, nutrition, and that's what they focus on there to prevent suicides, right? Um, and like our work at FAU, which is Florida Atlantic University through canines providing assistance to wounded warriors, that's where our focus is. So we focus on veteran health and a lot of it, so this this part of it, patient-centered outcomes is not focused on the human-animal interaction and how that heals people, but uh, the other half of what we do is that. So we focus on uh, whether people have a companion animal, whether they have a PTSD dog, right? A lot of people, it's helpful for them. And those are things that may not be paid for by insurance, but at least we can talk about them and hopefully move research forward to get the information we need to get things paid for. Yeah, exactly. And, and I have, I have a service dog. Her name's Liberty. Um, amazing dog. He went through, you know, with um, uh, four paws for Patriots, you know, you have mm -hmm. all these organizations that are doing some really cool training with, with these right. animals, the cost that's involved to create one of these creatures. But my, my whole thing was I got to train her, and go to this weekly program and be involved with other veterans right. going through this program. So these experiences are super important to me and I don't, I don't have enough time to experience all of them, but it's, right. it's cool that you, you, you have this, this, this knowledge as well, but I wouldn't have known about great, great team if I, if I didn't come, but you'd be able right. to talk about it. But I actually went into every one of those machines that they have oh, did you? And, and got to, yeah. I mean, I, okay. I try to, I tried to film at one point with my phone on this on this mattress that's you know a magnetic electromagnetic mattress with the sound right. that's going on like some sort right. of you know some just some deep sound of that's pulling you into your you know delta sleep and mm -hmm. I I dropped the phone on my chest because I just couldn't stand <laughs> 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 so so I just I just passed out for about 
I think about 45 minutes or so. Oh, no. um, well, that's good. And uh, <laughs> I, I slept amazing on this, you know, electromagnetic mattress and the sound, you know, piercing that was just going through the body and just like, whew. and I think when I got up off of that bed, my ankle has a lot of shrapnel in it, but I, mm-hmm. I was able to walk on it better than I have in a very long time for a short period of time. I mean, for probably, probably 24 hours before it kind of reset into its state. But I think that vibration has something to do with, and the electromagnet, I I don't know. It's some incredible stuff that goes on, It is. but these, these kind of, these kind of things, like you said, these, these therapies are so amazing, but there's not, the research isn't there to kind of back up some of the stuff that they do. It's Mm -hmm. there, but no one really wants to look at it because medication right. it's almost you know how did ford and chevy and all these other car companies not invent the electric car and tesla came mm-hmm. out because big oil industry didn't want them to invent this car mm-hmm. <laughs> so i think i think big pharmaceutical doesn't want anybody to invent a piece of gear that really works right because it's then possible. we don't like the pharmaceuticals maybe <laughs> yeah and um... There, like you said, there is there there's research out there. Um, hopefully, we'll begin to see more research. I know the VA, I think, is starting to research cannabis and things like that for for certain symptoms. Um, so hopefully, we'll move in that direction. It's just the research, as you know, it takes it takes a while. So it's not right. something, unfortunately, that we can do overnight. But like Dr. Peterson, he's in Texas, right, and he is in Strongstar, which is a consortium of researchers who work solely with veterans. And they have a lot of projects that they run. So they're, they have a website. And so if you looked up Strongstar, you could find them. And he was talking about getting involved in projects. And when we have that, the convening on Friday, he will be there and he'll discuss that. You know, veterans being a part of research, and uh, moving research forward and why that's important and what he has to offer with his organization. I think that's amazing too. Yeah. And he's, he's done a lot of research. He was, yes. he was at, he was at the, at the, at the meeting in, in Fort Lauderdale uh, in January. It was great to meet him and, and see what he was doing. Um, he, he brought a lot of knowledge to the, to the table with how the research kind of thing went together. And obviously you know, Cheryl is asking everybody, you know, who's going to pick up the next, uh, the, right. the next <laughs> research project. Right. So where, where are you at in your next research development or what, what, what do you got going on for, for this? Okay. Well, at the moment we have a proposal in to Corey as well, but it's more about dissemination of information, So we'll keep our fingers crossed and hopefully that will work. Um, after that, I need to really look at research questions and the next place to go. Because as somebody who works in academia, there are so many things on your plate all the time. Um, hopefully soon I will be able to focus on that. Right. So engagement comes first and then they look at dissemination uh, and implementation. By they, I mean the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute. And that's kind of how they guide researchers along. Right. To engage right. patient populations, and, disseminate information to pop- patient populations, and then to implement the research that has strong evidence, basically. Yeah, we spent we spent a lot of time kind of kind of really giving some amazing ideas of where research might want to go in the direction, and right. uh, I think that I think that's really going to be interesting to see how that how that goes. I love to be part of it. Thanks for thanks for including me in all this because. Um, you know, it's, it, this is my life. This is what I do. I spend a lot of time just really working on finding a lot of these projects, these, these cool organizations that are doing cool things. Right. I, I experiment on myself a little bit. You know, I use the, the crazy tool. I mean, the Saluma <laughs> was actually the first piece of equipment that I used. The Saluma is a light therapy, almost mm-hmm. IR light. That, it's like a heat pad, but it, it, it does light. And uh, it's supposed to speed up the healing process by 15%. That was the first piece of equipment that I've ever used. Um, luckily, okay. um, you know, I, I had the opportunity to kind of kind of work with these things. And so this research is really important to me because it 
it's 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 just another tool for me to be able to help our combat vets to say hey what are you doing about it well there's people that are doing things about it and i'm i'm i'm, I'm happy and proud to know these people <laughs> some of them you know right i don't know everybody but it, the, the more people i know the the, the more resources are available the, the it opens up a lot of things for for people that think that they're stuck especially Definitely. in my in my in my world of combat vets you know it's it's just amazing and and uh, and thank you for all the leadership the the cool setups you know it's going to be interesting so you know we got we got 10 march you can see it on the flyer all of our cool stuff and beth if there's anything else you want to throw out there uh, talk about it. Oh, well, uh, thank you for being a leader as well, because I think you are an amazing human being and people are lucky to have you in their corner. And hopefully, you know, more veterans will want to participate in research because that's the only way I think we can build trust and, and move forward. Because I know it can be daunting. Like you said, people think of research and think of blood and this and that, which may be the case, but uh, may not like the patient centered outcomes research. Right. So I just really appreciate everything, you know, from you and from everybody else on the team. And I think the, the convening will be wonderful and hopefully people will come out and listen, uh, listen to what we have done throughout this past year. And I, it will be taped as well. So hopefully if people can't come, we'll get it out there somehow. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. So thank you. Thanks, Beth. And if, and if people want to get a hold of you, throw it out there, any, any, any information you want to put out there. Otherwise, feel free to hit me up. I'll get you in touch with Beth. Uh, we'll, we'll make it work. So if they want to get a hold of you, if, right. How would they do? Well, if you, if you go to Florida Atlantic University College of Nursing, even if you Google and just put my name, Beth Pratt, you'll see my page. So it has a list of uh, research projects and everything and my email address. So email is probably easiest. Um, I don't know if you want me to say it or yeah, put go it ahead in the and chat. Say it if you want. Okay. B is in boy, P R A T T four at health dot F A U dot E D U. So, and it's also in the show new show. It'll be in the show notes. Uh, or if not, get a hold of me and I'll definitely make it work. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, there's one thing I was going to say. Oh yeah. I just want to remind everybody on the 10th, we have this event and it's going to be basically from one to two thirty Eastern time. And uh, it's going to go through a lot of different things and we're each going to have our sections. Uh, my sections on loneliness with, uh, with uh, Basilia and, um, and we're gonna we're gonna be able to talk about these things way way more in depth, but this is kind of a precursor, and it's kind of like a, a cool chance to to get to know Beth a little bit. You know, you get you always hear about these doctors. They're gonna you know you see their names <laughs> and stuff, but you know, I, I I talk Beth to getting on here. They don't really like to get <laughs> on here too much, but uh, there's disclaimers involved, and it's really good. But right. it's it's great. <laughs> oh, plus plus after the convening from two thirty to three, if people want to stay on, it's like a a networking event if you want to talk to any of us in depth people are welcome to stay on awesome hey and this is for anybody that's interested right. in this it's not just doctors nurses researchers no. veterans no it's for everybody so feel free to kind of open this up uh you know i put the uh i put the um um uh whatever tag thing is <laughs> you can uh <laughs> you can go on it and you can you can register get your, get your registration in and then uh, you'll get the zoom meeting information and, uh, and come on and, and listen to it and uh, check it out. Mm -hmm. That would be fabulous. Everybody come. It's a zoom any, meeting. Any so last... hold a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. It'll be interesting. Any last words, Beth, anything else? Um, no, I just, I mean, I'd like to thank all the veterans and people who participated in the groups and I hope we can do you justice. You know. Oh. Well, thanks, Beth. Much thank appreciation. you. I appreciate it. Okay. Hey, this is Aaron Siebert, retired Navy Chief. Uh, hey, hey, Brian, I know you're pushing the buttons. Do we have uh, the uh, the VA um, message? 
This is a message from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. If you were exposed to toxic substances while serving in the military, a new law called the PACT Act may make you eligible for additional benefits and care. The PACT Act benefits veterans of the Vietnam era, Gulf War era, and post 9-11 era who were exposed to toxic fumes, burn pits, Agent Orange, radiation, and other environmental hazards. Survivors of toxic exposed veterans and veterans who served in specific countries in Africa, the Middle East, and Southwest Asia are also potentially eligible. Learn more about the PACT Act by going to va.gov pact or by calling 1-800-MY-VA-411. We at VA are here for you, and we're ready to get you the care and benefits you've earned and deserve. I'm Mike Richmond. Hey, that was a message from the VA. Thanks a lot, the VA, for uh, selecting my my podcast as a podcast to kind of do that on. Hey, and this is this is brought to you by SitchRadio.com. Uh, thank you, Brian Colburn, for making this happen. Till next time, hey, this is Aaron Siebert, retired Navy Chief, signing off. Strength and honor.